So everyone got having had pop ups for the chicken sandwich, so it sounded kinda of pretty good today, so yeah, let's get right into it. And look at this Popeye sandwich right here. Super patty, super thick today. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, <clears throat> yesterday I was watching Little, Little American Idol last night on Sunday with my dad, actually. And I haven't really, you know, I w haven't been too fond of American Idol like, these past few years. Usually, I sometimes tune into The Boys. Um, I haven't been tuning in this season. And sometimes I like America's Got, Got Talent, especially, you know, when they have singers on as well. But actually, I'm pleasantly surprised that there's actually quite a few you know, young, talented, uh, aspiring musicians participating on American Idol. And um, Francisco, I'm a big fan of Francisco. And coincidentally, he's also from San Francisco as well. So I'm, I'm so important to my guy on there. Actually, my mom sent me like a YouTube video of him. And I watched a couple of his clips. And yeah, he's, he seems like a very timid, shy guy. Probably he's pretty nervous. It's very kind of apparent, but you know, you can always work, work on your stage presence. presence. Most importantly, you gotta have the talent to sing, which he definitely has the talent there. They're actually, so they, this past episode, since due to the coronavirus, a lot of people are filming at, at their own home, right? With the performances and stuff like that. And I'm not sure when, you know, when it's all said and done, when the coronavirus is, you know, dies down a little bit. I don't know when the American Idol will actually you know, come back, but we'll see. But it's nice that they actually have their participants, you know, singing songs from, from the home, right? And, you can see, you know, a lot of you, a lot of singers actually, you know, start on YouTube, like Justin Bieber, for example. I believe he was discovered by Usher. You know, he's just big posting videos on YouTube, and you know that's how he made he made it big. Got to start somewhere, right? But yeah, definitely this the way they recorded American Idol. It definitely gives that that vibe, right? You know, just you're in your home, you're comfortable, and you're singing singing in your element. But there were some other good singers as well. I was I forgot her name, but I believe there's this African American girl. Oh man, she she has a great voice. I forgot her name. She's very young. She's probably well, I'm guessing maybe sixteen years old. But yeah, there's a tons of other young participants as well. But she, her voice definitely really stood out to me. So another, actually this is a documentary, and if you're a big sports fan or basketball fan in general, then pretty sure you know about this. But of course, probably many people are tuning in to The Last Dance, which is a documentary on one of probably maybe 
probably the best player to ever grace the basketball court, Michael Jordan. So in this documentary, I actually thought this was only going to be a special of like one like one movie, right? But I was pleasantly surprised that there's going to be like around I think believe ten episodes. I actually have only tuned in to episode one and two, and uh, episode three or four. I think Pat aired this past weekend, and eventually, you know, I'll get around to watching it, of course. So unfortunately, you know, I ha- wasn't born in the era during Michael Jordan played, and you know, everyone there's countless stories, and you know, of course, many highlights I, I have seen on YouTube definitely proves that he was. A monster on the court and you know many regard him as the greatest player of all time I, like looking at his highlights I really think that he is pretty much and uh, people you know, young younger the younger generation these days hasn't seen him and you know the the great players that people my age or younger that really regard as the greatest players of all the greatest player to ever play the game maybe it's like Kobe Bryant and LeBron James who have dominated the sport for quite some time. But initially, after watching the first two episodes of The Last Dance, I thought it was just going to be strictly on Michael Jordan, but it actually shed some light you know, about the management, the, the issues behind the front office, and, you know, between the players as well. So I was, pl- that, I was very pleasant to be surprised to, you know, of course, we know about Michael Jordan, but definitely this documentary will delve in deeper into, you know, what was going on not between the whole team of, of the Chicago Bulls and not just him. <clears throat> so quickly, just getting back to the top of basketball. What do you guys consider the best you know, teams of NBA history? Definitely the Warriors are no doubt up there too. But and Michael Jordan's team as well. But hmm, that Shaq and Kobe duo, man, I don't know, they might be number one for me to be honest. Kobe with his lethal, you know, shooting has you know the same mentality as Michael Jordan and then the unstoppable force in his prime, Sha- Shaquille O'Neal. No one can guard him down low. No one on the Bulls or the Warriors would be able to guard him, right? You know, if Dr- like Draymond Green's going to guard Shaq, no. It's barbecue chicken uh, and the wraps under the block for him. Yeah, and then Dennis Rodman would guard Shaq, or I don't know who would guard Shaq. But yeah, that'd be crazy. But anyways, yeah, let's get to... So, as I mentioned in the previous video, I picked up an anime called Apare Rodman. And I'm going to you know, give a little insight on what happened episode two so you know as i mentioned before apare and kosame are you know arrive in los angeles and immediately are thrown into a whole new world right compared to where they're in the eastern side of the world you know tokyo is completely different from america definitely america has progressed much further than tokyo in Japan, uh, tech in technology wise, right? So as a result, you know when they arrive in Los Angeles, they don't have a penny to their name, and you know they try to find work. And upon you know trying to search for jobs, that both of them got rejected from all the jobs. And <coughs> excuse me. And then what I find really ironic is you know this is a Japanese anime, and you know two foreigners, two young men from Japan go to America and they can converse with people in America, I highly doubt it, but it's just an anime, right? So, you know, I don't think they actually would know English. But anyways, that that's just a, that's just a little funny thing I picked up. So yeah, they can't really find any jobs and then they happen to, you know, meet meet back up in a local park and they happen to see a guy who's doing this little, you know, street performance kind of like a gig so the object of this game is to have the person hit him but he's not going to hit you he'll dodge all try to dodge all your hits and if you manage to <clears throat> land a hit on him then you get some money and uh, 
So Apare and Kosame do the same gig, but you know, Kosame actually is like a samurai and you know, he's pretty much doing the same thing, but he's just like wielding a sword. And of course, they attract all his customers and it's found out that this guy is supposedly some ex-pro boxer, which I don't know if he really is. And, you know, he steps up to, to the plate and, you know, Kosame dodges everyone, every one of his hits with ease. And so they at this little gig right here, they make a little, some quick cash and you know, they got some little nice money on the side. So upon, you know, after mixing some quick cash, they kind of, you know, trying to look around the surroundings and see, see what's up in Los Angeles. So upon, you know, just walking, I believe a car dropped like a flyer nearby on the street and a car picked it up and it said this was just a flyer for the Transamerica race. And eventually they, I believe they follow that car <coughs> and they happen to find themselves on the racing track with you know motor vehicles where everyone was betting for racing and Apare was greatly amused by this sight said wow these cars are much faster compared to the ones you know back home and he said <clears throat> to Ishiki Ukosame that you know let's do this thing let's enter the race for the prize winnings of one million dollars you know <clears throat> they have no way of getting back home at this point in time since you know it's very costly to travel all the way to Japan, right? And they have no money. So the easiest way would be, you know, trying to win this, you know, this crazy race across the country. <clears throat> and, you know, every Kosama is like, oh, what the heck? You know, this, we have nothing to lose. And I'm very lucky to be with a very bright genius who might just make it possible. But of course, you know, Kosama thinks this is still a pipe dream. You know, <clears throat> and then eventually, you know, Kusame and Apare, you know, they sneak back into the racetrack at late at night, and they happen to find someone, you know, secretly racing on the racetrack, and Apare was kind of being a, you know, not very smart. He decides to jump on the track, and the racer is forced to swerve <clears throat> the car, and luckily the racer wasn't hurt. But the car was greatly damaged, <clears throat> and it was it was uh, revealed that the person who was riding uh, driving the car, race car was the chore girl for the track. So she she's of Chinese descent. Her name is Jing Xiaolian. Okay, so I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it. <clears throat> and her family runs a laundry store. So you know. A lot of Asian families, you know, they typically, you know, run laundromats or even, like, you know, liquor stores, you know. And her family happens to run a laundry mat. <clears throat> and ever, I believe, you know, yeah, during this time, you know, a lot of people try to come to America for a better life. And if you know, like, the history of Chinese people coming to America, they were greatly responsible for, you know, building the railroad tracks in California, I believe. <clears throat> and yes, and ever since she was young, uh, Jing Xia Lian always was, you know, greatly amused by, you know, race cars. And she secretly, she always wanted to become a race car driver. But, you know, <clears throat> during this time, you know, back in the, about these, this, the young, these young times when people, men, the gender roles were de definitely de more defined in this era. So like women are supposed to cook and clean and be housewives and stay at home <clears throat> while the men do, you know, the heavy lifting and make money for the family. But, you know, these this, these concepts aren't as, you know, prominent, prominent today. That's pretty much thrown out the door. You know, women are, you know, very independent and, you know, have jobs of their own, right? <clears throat> but Jiang Xia Lian, Lian uh, you know, she... She works at this racetrack. She's does chores for all these people who runs this whole place. And unfortunately, she's said, like she's out of luck. So the car's broken down, and you know probably be fired next morning. But you know Apare and you know Kosame get to you know introduce each other, 
introduce themselves to each other and you know Upare boldly says that you know he says he's gonna win this race and you know just like anyone else Jin Jing Xialian you know is very skeptical just like his parents and as well as Kosama everyone's co- laughing and kind of somewhat scoffing at him you know for boldly saying things that may seem impossible so you know <clears throat> eventually you know Jin Xia Lian, uh, she goes back home and unbeknownst to her, she didn't know, you know, Apare is quite the genius and, and tech savvy himself. So the next morning, she's coming into work expecting that she's going to be fired, but unbeknownst to her, her boss says, What are you talking about? The car that you mentioned is running just fine and maybe even running even better than it was before. <clears throat> so, yeah, that really shocked her. And yeah, that's pretty much wrapping up episode two of Apare Ryan Man. Um, I think it's pretty good so far. <clears throat> and I think, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's doing good out there. Well, at least in San Francisco, it's pretty nice. <clears throat> I'm getting back into jogging, trying to get back in shape. I'm still huffing and puffing, you know, after running, you know, over a mile. But, you know, hopefully I can get my stamina, uh, pretty decent you know i'm not to i'm not going to be like you know crazy olympian smile runner or anything like that of course not but you know it's best to you know stay in shape and um yeah thank you for watching peace